Hello everyone. As an introduction, I'm working in Surface and Collate Engineering Research Group at Michigan University. We study a synthesis of cellular space hybrid material, which is integrated with copper nanoparticles and their possible applications. At given time, at first, I'm going to give you a brief overview on scientific approaches of cellular space hybrid material, and then I'm going to uh, present the result of our study. Cellulose is known as an inexpensive and biodegradable biopolymer, and it can be used to fulfill increasing demand for producing environmentally friendly products. Cellulose can provide a good mechanical performance. Also, uh, cellulose can provide a good <coughs> mechanical resistivity in a wide range of solvents. On the other hand, metal particles in nanometer size range often show interesting physical and chemical properties which uh, sometimes differ from their bond properties. To be usable, uh, recyclable, and cost-effective, metal nanoparticles often need to be incorporated in the support material, which in our case we use cellulose as a support material. By incorporating metal nanoparticles in cellulose matrix and metal nanoparticles <coughs> cellulose hybrid material with unique catalytic, uh, catalytic magnetic, uh, biomedical, uh, and electronic uh, properties can be produced and used in different applications. <coughs> Regarding synthesizing metal nanoparticles, more specifically copper nanoparticles as we studied, uh, there are several approaches that have been proposed such as electrochemical, photochemical, sonochemical, thermal treatment and chemical treatment. Uh, yes. One of the most commonly used procedure is based on chemical treatment and more specifically is wet chemical technique. This is the approach that we used in our study to fabricate the copper nanoparticles inside the cellulose matrix. An overview on in situ synthesis of metal nanoparticle cellulose hybrid material indicates that most of synthetic protocols uh, consist of two main steps. The first step is impregnation of cellulose with metal ions. For this purpose, different cellulose materials with different structures and also uh, chemical and modified cellulose have been used for efficient and uniform impregnation of cellulose with metal ions. This is a bit, could be quite time consuming and in some cases it could take up to several days for efficient and uniform impregnation of cellulose with metal ions. After this step, uh, the second step is reduction of metal ions into metal, metal oxide nanoparticles. This can be done by either using a proper reducing agent such as sodium borohydride or hydrazine or other physical reduction techniques such as UV treatment and heat treatment. Although these approaches are successful, they have drawbacks like being time consuming as I mentioned in the first step of synthetic protocols. Often they introduce uh, a complex protocol consists of multiple steps in a severe synthetic condition. And one of the major problems is difficulties in controlling the size and distribution of nanoparticles inside the cellulose matrix. In our study that I'm going to present now, we've tried to address those drawbacks and we've tried to overcome those drawbacks of currently being used procedure. Here I'm going to present the synthesized route that we developed to synthesize a metal nanoparticle a cellulose hybrid material. In our approach, uh, we start from water-based cellulose solution as a source of cellulose, and this solution needs to be mixed with the copper chelating ligand complex solution as a source of copper. Then by adding uh, acidic solution, cellulose will be regenerated in this mixed solution. What we use as a reducing agent was formaldehyde, and formaldehyde was added to this mixture uh, with regenerated cellulose to reduce copper ions. In less than 20 minutes, hybrid material will be synthesized. The synthesis uh, could be easily monitored by observing gradually fading blue color of copper solution, which became colorless at the end of the experiment. Simultaneously, the white color of regenerated cellulose changed to dark brown, indicating formation of metallic copper. 
At the end of the experiment, the synthesized hybrid material could be easily separated by simple vacuum filtration or other separation technique uh, and designed in almost any shape to use in different applications. As can be seen, the whole synthetic procedure is simple and it was quite reproducible and it can be completed in less than 20 minutes in one block condition under ambient conditions. After separating the synthesized material, we characterize the sample by using field emission scale electron microscopy. As can be seen in microscopy images at different magnifications, uh, inside the cellulose matrix, there is a fairly uniform dispersion of spherical copper nanoparticles in a size range of 200 to 500 nanometer. In addition, we characterize this sample by using X-ray diffraction technique. An X-ray diffraction pattern of hybrid material clearly show that this sample consists of regenerated cellulose, cellulose 2, the first two peaks in diffraction pattern, and copper and cuprous oxide. Based on intensity of diffraction P, we calculate the ratio between the amount of copper and cuprous oxide, which was about 80% copper and 20% cuprous oxide. Also, uh, from line broadening of diffraction P, uh, by using Scherer equation, we calculate the average crystalline size of copper, which was about 15 to 13 nanometer, and surprisingly it was in well agreement with the crystallite size, as we can see in the microscopy images. <coughs> to explain how this <coughs> approach results in well distributed copper nanoparticles inside the cellulose matrix, we propose following step. Under alkaline condition, hydroxyl group in regenerated cellulose will be dissociated. Copper ions can be absorbed by electrostatic complexation with dissociated hydroxyl group which creating a well-distributed nucleation site for further reduction steps. In next step, by adding a proper reducing agent, adsorbed copper ions can be reduced and crystallic, uh, copper crystallites are formed, and we have crystallite growth in this stage. And finally, well-distributed copper nanoparticles separating uh, the cellulose matrix. <coughs> As a possible application for uh, synthesized hybrid material, we uh, examine the antibacterial properties of this material for both gram-negative and gram-positive bacterial strength. Our results clearly show that bacterial growth was inhibited in a suspension <coughs> containing uh, hybrid material. For instance, after 24 hours, there is almost 40% decline for both gram-negative and gram-positive bacterial strain in compared with their control sample. After 48 hours, there is even more decline in bacterial density in compared with their control samples. And after 72 hours, there is almost 80% decline in bacterial density for gram-negative bacterial strain and almost 90 to 95% decline in bacterial density for gram-positive bacterial strain. I had some images here, which is not visible. All right. To sum up, uh, this work presents a fast and reproducible one-pot synthesized route uh, to produce cellulose-based hybrid material, which is separated with copper nanoparticles. The hybrid material comprises well dispersed spherical copper nanoparticles with a narrow size distribution. We observe that in situ regenerated cellulose plays an important role on controlling the size and dispersion of copper nanoparticles inside the cellulose matrix. As I mentioned earlier, the hybrid material displays obvious antibacterial properties for both gram negative and gram positive bacterial strain. This material could be designed in almost any shape and used for different applications. Our ongoing research is examining this material in catalytic and electronic applications. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Alessa. Do we have some questions from the audience, Mark? Are you tired? <laughs> Have you 
shopping oriented uh, yeah. uh, environmental that is if, if you i mean if you put a uh, copper which which might be a uh, poisonous uh, substance i mean it's ultimate bacteria for example <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, if, if you mix it together with other uh, paper it, it might uh, it might be some, some risk. I see your point. Uh, as long as we don't re uh, we don't pass the limits, it's, there is no problem. We can use their properties. Very good question, I would say. And uh, uh, just a, a very short comment. Uh, that that is something that we have considered. And uh, if you compare, I mean, silver to copper, for instance, that then you have gone to a better state at least. But I believe that the applications will be more directed into catalytic and electronic applications where we don't need water medium that could actually make emissions of copper a problematic. And one more thing to add uh, regarding the copper and compared with the uh, cost that you need to pay for the silver.